starts right now. Runny noses, coughs, and high fevers. Those symptoms most likely sound familiar to parents of young children. The doctors say there's been an increase in illnesses often seen in kids in the fall and winter. A rise in cases of croup, RSV, the common cold among the most common. The night team's Patty Santos tells us why there's concern about some of these turning into more serious cases that's prompting the CDC to step in. Sneezing, coughing, uh, respiratory, um, like just like um, almost like COVID related symptoms. Jennifer Mauricio says she's been really cautious about where she takes her five year old Abra, but somehow she still got sick. We haven't been anywhere um, like she just finished school on Thursday. Abra got COVID in January, but she was tested again today as a precaution. Pediatrician Robert Sanders says there's been a recent rapid rise in upper respiratory illnesses in kids of all ages. It was almost like a faucet turned on actually shortly after the mask mandate was dropped. Sanders says many of the kids coming in to see him have symptoms of coughs, high fevers. Most are just experiencing a common cold, but some more serious cases of croup are popping up. It can cause um, a barky seal-like cough, and in younger children, it can cause trouble breathing sometimes, especially at night. But he's closely watching an alarming number of RSV infections in several states, including Texas, that prompted a health advisory from the CDC urging for more testing for the virus. Respiratory syncytial virus, uh, it's a virus that causes bronchiolitis. That's um, that's an infection that actually can be pretty severe and little uh, in our younger patients. I know I can't keep them in a bubble. <laughs> uh, you know, kids are going to get sick, but at least this is a wake up call for me. First time mom Alex Diaz says she's tightening up her sanitizing routine after her 15 month old contracted a common summertime illness, hand, foot and mouth disease. It takes like seven to 10 days for his body just to fight it on his own. So we're just counting down the days. And Dr. Sanders says he thinks the best way to protect your kids is to teach them good hygiene, to wash their hands often. He thinks that the illnesses are probably going to stick around until mid-July and then make a resurgence when kids return to school. Steve Isis. Thank you, Patty. Caught on camera, the moment a 33-year-old woman being pursued by police drove her truck to a 7-Eleven, only to have officers quickly descend on her as she leaves her vehicle. Later, they took her into custody. That's how the story ends, but it started with the suspect causing traffic problems near a scene where officers were already gathered for another operation. Police say the woman arrived at the scene in the 3600 block of Fredericksburg Road began acting belligerent with officers then they asked her to leave. She was holding up traffic, they said. The suspect did leave, but later returned, committing several traffic violations in the process. That's when officers tried to stop her. When they initiated the traffic stop, the suspect uh, intentionally rammed into a patrol car, as well as a few other uh, citizen vehicles, and fled the area. Officers then followed the woman across the west and south sides until she parked at that 7-Eleven and was arrested. She is now facing charges, including aggravated assault of a peace officer and evading arrest. In addition, police tell us she's also in being investigated in connection with other possible crimes, though it remains unclear what those are at this time. An update now on a fire which destroyed the home of a Northside ISD police officer last week. The district says Officer Yvonne Lopez and many of her family members are still recovering from serious injuries caused by that fire. According to Northside ISD, Lopez, her husband, and eight other family members were all hospitalized following the fire at their West Side home. It happened on Dublin Field near Loop 1604. Lopez and her husband were both burned while trying to save their children from the flames, which firefighters say started on the second floor. Many had to jump from the second floor to get out in time, leading to additional injuries. The district indicated the family is still in the hospital and hopefully will be released soon. A cause is still unknown. San Antonio police asking for your help tonight, finding those suspected in multiple bur burglaries at Market Square over the past few days. Take a look at your screen right now. Police believe those pictured here burglarized and in some cases damaged several vendor tents in Market Square during Fiesta shortly after the Fiesta activities ended. 
One vendor reported their booth was hit twice in two days. Items stolen, stolen included wallets, purses, hunting knives, and utensils. If you recognize these people or have any information related to these crimes, you're asked to call Central Property Crimes at 210-207-7990. The latest now in that deadly mass shooting in Austin two weekends ago. Charges have been dropped against the 17-year-old male and another juvenile male who were arrested in connection to that shooting on 6th Street. Austin police say today they are searching for a new suspect, 19-year-old DeAndre White. Police believe White is the gunman who shot and killed 25-year-old Douglas Cantor and injured 13 other people. Police say White will be charged with murder once found. As for the two whose charges were dropped, Austin's police chief says the investigation is ongoing and they could face charges later on. We also have a night beat update on those shootings across the southern border in Reynosa over the weekend, which left 19 people dead. 14 of which were innocent bystanders. The top prosecutor in the state of Tamaulipas, where Reynosa is located, says it was infighting between rival factions of a Gulf drug cartel, which led to the deadly violence. The prosecutor went on to say two gangs, which operate just outside of Reynosa, which is just south of McAllen, launched the attack in order to weaken their rival faction in the city. Trucks carrying the gunman drove into Reynosa, where the suspects then opened fire. The goal, according to the prosecution, to create public terror so they may come in and take control. Four of those gunmen among those killed. Well, back here at home, San Antonio's new District 1 City Councilman says he is ready to tackle one of the key issues that helped get him elected. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo says homelessness is a citywide problem, and he's hoping to work with the council to help resolve it. But in his own district, he's inherited a homeless camp outside the District 1 field house or field office, which his predecessor, Roberto Trevino, allowed as a safe haven for those experiencing homelessness. But the camp doesn't sit well with residents in the area who say they hope Bravo will clear out the camp. There are no quick fixes to this. What I've done is I hit the ground running and I've been meeting with everybody I can to uh, all the experienced professionals who work on homelessness issues um, to see how we can work best um, on long term solutions. One possible solution down the road, moving those outside the field house to the downtown hotel that Bravo and his council colleagues agreed to lease last week to operate as a low barrier homeless shelter. But that could take some time. Until then, Bravo says he will keep neighbors in District 1 in the conversation. Very sticky and humid again today, but not overly hot. Actually, 90 degrees the high temperature. That's three degrees below average for the day. Del Rio topping out at 94, Catula 95. Those were the warmest locations, but again, it was very sticky out there. And you look at our high temperatures the rest of this week. We're going to see them tick upward a little bit by Thursday, 96, Friday up to 97. And then they start to trend down a little bit towards the end of the weekend and into next week. That's also when we'll have some more shower and storm chances coming into the picture. I'm going to talk more about that, our weather pattern, and what those rain chances are like coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Night in old San Antonio officially in full swing. It's a favorite Fiesta event, which raises money to preserve our historic sites in San Antonio. The night team's Japhne Gray is there right now as things wrap up for the night. How'd it go, Japhne? Yes, guys, the doors open at 530. They're expected to close in less than 30 minutes, but as you can see, a ton of people are out having a good time. Again, this is just uh, one of many Fiesta events that uh, is considered to be a party with a purpose. And after that pandemic, that purpose has a deeper meaning. Whether you say Niosa or Neosa, come on down, y'all. Night in old San Antonio Field La Vista went excitement on night one for hundreds who came out. The VSD event meaning something special for everyone. Jubilant. Tradition. Fun. Fellowship. Family. Spectacular. Historic. Party time? Something people had to do differently this go around was wait in line for a blast pass wristband, which you had to use to get food or drinks. How long were you in line? For almost an hour. Was it worth it? Uh, it is. I just need to get a beer and I need to get some food in me now. <laughs> some people not too happy about that change. Just go back to the old way they had it. But once that band was on, you were a step closer to eating some of the food favorites of Fiesta. What were you most excited about eating? Um, the mushrooms. <laughs> Steer on a stick. Chicken on a stick! A turkey leg. Whether you were eating, drinking, or dancing, 
People took pride in this party with a purpose as all proceeds will go to the Conservation Society of San Antonio. I mean, look at the missions, how old those are down there. I was in, I was just in fourth grade and we were studying like Texas history and we did like the Alamo and so it was really cool and I got to see them. Viva Fiesta! We're getting back to normal and San Antonio needs desperately to get some normalcy again. Energized with everyone and each other to uh, really thrive uh, after you know being isolated. And in the back of your minds, you know it's come at um, a significant cost uh, for so many families. So keeping that in mind, uh, the level of gratitude for each other, what we have here in San Antonio is just off the charts. Now I also will continue through the rest of this week, and of course officials are encouraging everyone, if you're not fully vaccinated, wear a mask. But that's okay, because whether you have a mask or no mask, the party never stops. Am I right, Viva Fiesta? I'll send it back to you guys. I think she sent it back to yes. us. Yes. I love that. All right, as Fiesta continues through the week, we've got a list of all the upcoming day-to-day -day events, as well as all of our Fiesta coverage posted on KSAT.com. You can sign up for our Fiesta newsletter there as well, so you don't miss a thing. Republicans delivering a major blow to the president and Democrats today as an election reform bill fails to get enough votes to proceed in the Senate. However, supporters of the bill say this is only the beginning of their fight. The latest when the night be continues. Democrats, along with the White House, vowing to press on and redouble efforts to pass federal voting rights legislation into law. This after Republicans today successfully prevented a voting rights bill from moving forward in the Senate. ABC's Elizabeth Schultze has the latest from Washington. In a defeat for Democrats, an expansive voting rights and election reform bill has failed to advance in the Senate. The motion is not agreed to. All 50 Senate Republicans voting against a motion to debate the voting rights bill, ending its chances of moving forward in the chamber. Look, what this is really about is an effort for the federal government to take over the way we conduct elections in this country. It is a solution in search of a problem. And so finally today, uh, we will uh, put an end to it. Uh, here in the Senate. The bill is a top priority for Democrats' legislative agenda, as Republican-led legislatures in more than a dozen states pass laws along party lines, putting new restrictions on voting. The state laws take steps like limiting mail-in voting and ballot drop boxes and tightening ID requirements, making it harder for Americans across the country to vote. This state has perfected the means of suppressing the vote of keeping some down to the benefit of others. Most Democrats said the voting rights bill in the Senate seeks to counter these state measures with steps like making voter registration automatic, expanding absentee and early voting, limiting partisan gerrymandering and reforming campaign finance laws. Democrats are vowing to press on, saying they're united in the fight to protect and expand voting rights. If nobody is debating, I don't believe, whether all Americans have the right to vote. The issue here is, is there actual access to the voting process? The fight is not over. A new Monmouth University poll found more than two-thirds of Americans say they support national guidelines to allow vote by mail or early in-person voting in every state. A majority of Republicans say they support the idea. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Sky 12 tonight over La Villita as Nyosa ends for the evening or is about to end for the evening. I think it's actually into 1030. But the party still goes on. Indeed, it, <laughs> it does. does. Right. Yes. Yes. And, uh, I, I do have to say it didn't look quite as crowded down there as it usually does. No, it, especially in that shot right there. I would agree with you on that. But who knows? This is only night number one, right? True. There's more to go and they've got the rain rock out and the rain really just barely dodged parts of San Antonio last night and early this morning. Let's take a look at some of the rainfall that was out there and particularly in the hill country. We had some of the most impressive accumulations. That's where you see the oranges and reds on the map indicating between two and five inches of rain from parts of Edwards to Real counties, even uh, down near Del Rio, nearly two inches. But you'll look around the San Antonio area. 
and especially Bear County, and it's the haves and have nots. And northern half of San Antonio really didn't get much. The airport 400 of an inch. Downtown, though, picked up 0.62. Stinson, nearly 1.8. Elmendorf, about half an inch. St. Hedwig area, 0.9. Floresville, over an inch. And we still have a few lingering showers that are coming to an end right now in Lavaca County and Gonzales counties. Those are ending, and that should be it for the night in terms of any areas of rain, but not for the entire forecast. So let's Let's talk about our pattern. We had some decent showers between Corpus Christi and Laredo actually this afternoon because of the rain cooled air. Laredo is in the mid 70s for, an, for the afternoon temperature. So they had a nice cool shower move through there. Otherwise, what we have settling in is the big blue H, the heat high, the upper level high. That's going to keep us dry here for several days. And actually, it's really going to plant itself right overhead and it'll help warm us up a little bit through Friday. And then through the weekend, start pushing westward. And once it's not overhead anymore and it's displaced from us, as I often say, it opens the door to new disturbances. And I think we'll have some activity out there that will then give us some shower and thunderstorm chances by Sunday, lasting through the early to middle part of next week. So sunny, warm and dry the next several days all the way through Saturday. Then we get into Sunday afternoon, some pop up scattered showers and thunderstorms back in the forecast, even a little more numerous potentially on Monday. And then we'll still have some chances toward Tuesday and Wednesday of next week as well. Until then, I think we're getting into a pretty dry stretch stretch here. 83 degrees. The current rating dew point is 73 though, so it feels like it's up to 89. Hondo's at 82, 81 Bulverde, Canyon Lake 82, and Pleasanton 81. Meanwhile, up in the hill country, some readings in the 70s. Of course, it's sticky outside. We have the high humidity, but temperatures not really abnormal for this time of year. Uvalde at 80 and Del Rio still at 88. So let's talk about tomorrow morning. I think most of us in the mid 70s, 75 Uvalde and Hondo, Canyon Lake 75, Gonzales at 77. Then by the afternoon, we just creep into the 90s, a little closer to 100 as you get near the Rio Grande. Even Carrizo Springs up near 100 degrees for the high temperature. The Lackland area, 94, Converse as well. Timberwood Park, Leon Springs, 92 for high temperatures. For most of San Antonio, we'll say about 93 degrees on average, and that's after a morning reading of 75. So mid 70s and very sticky in the morning. You'll notice the humidity in the afternoon, making it feel like it's a little closer to 100 very briefly in the afternoon. And despite some morning clouds, a decent amount of sunshine the rest of the day. And that trend continues for the rest of the work week, even into the weekend, but we bump those temperatures up a little bit. Friday Friday, we're talking 97. That's going to be our peak. And then once we have those rain chances back in the forecast and that shift in our pattern back down a little closer to 90 into next week. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. All right. So we found out who got the number one pick in the NBA. The Spurs have been lucky in the past. 1.7% chance. There's a chance, Greg. <laughs> Slim and none. none. And, none and none just one. one. Yeah. There you go. All right. Where do the Spurs pick? Just probably where we thought they were going to. When we come back, we'll let you know about that and who got number one. And the prayers are going out for a former Aggies head coach. You know what the Aggies say. No such thing as a former Aggie. Coming up. The number one pick in the 2021 NBA Draft goes to the Detroit Pistons. There you go. We know who will pick first in the NBA Draft, but where were the Spurs selected? Big board sports. Look at Ben Wallace. Our San Antonio Spurs to select 12 of the 2021 NBA Draft. As that is the results of tonight's NBA Draft Lottery. That's not bad. We consider they select 11 the last season. We're able to land Devin Vassell, who played a total of 62 games this season as a rookie. And this will be the fourth season the Spurs will pick in the top 20. And that's after they only had a 1.7% chance of landing the number one pick overall. As the Spurs managing partner, Peter J. Holt, was the team's representative tonight. Meantime, the Detroit Pistons beat out Houston and Orlando. All had a 14% chance of and the top pick, the Pistons are expected to select Cade Cunningham out of Oklahoma State with the first pick when the NBA holds the draft July 22nd. Here's a look at the overall order. Starts with Detroit, followed by Houston, Cleveland, Toronto, Orlando, Oklahoma City, and Golden State from Minnesota. And the rest of it looks like this. Orlando from Chicago, Sacramento, New Orleans, Charlotte. There's number 12, San Antonio, 13, Indiana, and 14, Golden State. To the NBA playoffs in the Western Conference tonight, Clippers and Suns game two. And just like game one, both teams missing an all-star. Kawhi Leonard for L.A., Chris Paul for Phoenix. 
Phoenix. Suns' Cameron Payne connects on this three-pointer. He led everybody with 16 first-half points in the 2018 number one overall draft pick. DeAndre Aiden throwing down the alley oops. Suns by two after one. Clippers' Reggie Jackson with 11 first-half points. This jumper right here gets the Clips within three. L.A. ends the half on an 8-2 run. Paul George under the basket going up strong for the bucket. Suns by one. 48-47 going into halftime. We're in the fourth quarter now. Less than five to play. And the Suns are holding on to a narrow lead. 93-90. to Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. When the Dallas Cowboys kicked off their training camp in California less than a month from now, after a year-long absence due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it will be our first opportunity to hear from Cowboy star running back Ezekiel Elliott. Whether it's the fact he's facing two legal matters involving his dogs or coming off the worst season of his career, he's avoided talking to the media so far. He is facing a lawsuit after claims that Zeke's Rottweiler bit somebody back in March. Then there was this past May when he was cited by police in Frisco after three of his dogs got out and one of them, the Rottweiler, bit two people that had to be taken to the hospital. But he's also coming off a season where he only averaged a career low four carries per game with only six touchdowns. But the worst of it was he had a career high six fumbles with five loss. That said, we have seen video of him working out, but we have to rely on others to give us an update like his teammates. He's definitely been locked in. You know, I can tell he's you know, took the right step forward this offseason, you know, getting his body right and getting in shape. And, you know, me and him, you know, we also worked out together a lot of times during the offseason. So, you know, we both were locked in this offseason getting, getting ready. All right, we'll find out when the Cowboys report to Oxnard on July 20th, and we will be there. This week in San Antonio, world champion Mario Barrios will put this WBA super lightweight title on the line when he faces Gervonta Davis in the main event on Showtime's Worldwide Card Live from Atlanta. El Azteca is 26-0 with 17 knockouts, while his opponent Davis is also undefeated at 24-0 with 23 knockouts and is moving up two weight classes to fight Barrios before stepping into the ring on Saturday. Barrios held a press conference at San Antonio's International Airport, complete with Aztec Warriors playing drums and dancing. Quite the entrance for El Azteca. This was new, but I mean, it, it was it was nice. I mean, it's it's, it's very motivating. It just you know, it's a reminder of um, of everything you know that is unfolding in front of me, and um, all the hard work that I had to continue on putting in. All right, if you would like to purchase the fight, the. Barrios Davis fight pay per view. All you have to do is pay up $69.99. The winningest coach in Texas AM football history begins a fight for his life next. It is a great day at the ballpark for this little Longhorn fan with a cotton candy ready to cheer on his team. An elimination game against Tennessee in the College World Series. Bottom of the second. Horns down two. Eric Kennedy at the plate with runners in second and third. And the swing of the bat. Horns just takes the lead. Three run blaster right. Gives Texas a one run edge. The balls would tie it up at four in the top of the fourth. But the Horns charge forward in the bottom of the inning. Silas Ardoin with the RBI single to right. One run easily scores. Doug Hodo is given the wave home. There'll be a play at the plate. And he beats the throw. It is six to four. He's safe. But they're not finished. Cam Williams with an RBI single to left makes it a three-run game. Texas lives to play another day, eight to four. One of the most beloved coaches in the history of Texas A&M football, R.C. Slocum, has been diagnosed with a form of Hodgkin lymphoma that was confirmed by the university this afternoon. They said the coach will have to undergo chemotherapy at the Scott White Hospital and College Station. Slocum is the winningest coach in Texas A&M football history after leading the Aggies from 1989 to 2002. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame and is currently sitting on the College Football Playoff Selection Committee. Of course, we send our prayers to Coach Slocum, one of my most favorite coaches I've ever covered in my career. In fact, there is a picture of him right outside my office at home dating back many years ago that I, I cherish greatly. I actually met him at George W. Bush's first inauguration yeah. in D.C. Could not have been nicer. One of the greatest coaches of all time and one of the nicest people. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. We're going to warm up gradually a bit this, the rest of this work week. 93 tomorrow, then up to 97 by Friday. We'll start the weekend in the mid-90s as well. But a shift in our weather pattern will reintroduce the chance of some showers and thunderstorms daily Sunday all the way into the early, even middle part of next week. So we could get some good maintenance rain. We can use it. That's it for the night beat GMSA at 430. Good night.